Many of my most transformative insights, inspirations for what to do or not do at key pivotal points in my life appeared in moments of silence and solitude. And this is what I'd like to discuss with you today. So I titled today's conversation mind map, In and From the Silence. Now in Sunday's video, we spoke of revealing the true nature of self by allowing it to emerge from the silence through imagination and evidence through the five senses as far as they perceive, mediating God ideally to all life experiences. All of this from the silence from which this world made visible through the senses appears, as a healthy, harmonious relationship between the observer and the observation. Now, we've all experienced during or after meditation or moments of solitude or stillness, clarity and fluidity of mind, through which a still, silent voice speaks, bringing understanding to the various experiences of life allowing one to think clearly and accurately. Thus, I consider silence and solitude as part of self-acceptance, listening to yourself and trusting yourself as you know the way. These moments increase in frequency while the release of unnecessary control is experienced with the objects made visible through the five senses to be re-experienced from your true nature of love happiness, bliss, and fulfillment. This is the power of silence, which is stillness, which is you as the unconditional observer. This is key to understanding your true nature of being and living the life you truly desire to live. And by unconditional observer, I mean immediate experience of the understanding that the body may appear to move, the world may appear to move, Yet you remain as the unconditional loving observer of it all, one with God who appears and animates all that appears. One true reality experienced as observer and the observed through imagination. This is the unconditional I, the self, created in the image of the creator to imagine into life experiences what was already created as stated in Genesis 2.1. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. So it is in silence or moments of solitude where the self is experienced and understood to be beyond what one may have been accustomed to thinking about themselves as existing on the physical plane alone. Perhaps they allowed themselves to believe the I is the human body or the brain from which they think emerges mind, which then they may think through specific beliefs that spirit is a nebulous something, and through this thinking, they appear to live on the physical plane alone, and perhaps thus thinking of a higher power outside of consciousness, if it is thought of to exist at all. Now, there are those that may believe their I as intellect or mind, having control of the body and its organs, and having its abode in the human being. To them, the intellect may be considered as the true self, thus perhaps confusing between instinct and intuition and its relationship to the intellect, which William Walker Atkinson once clarified very nicely in his book, The Inner Consciousness. He said, In the region of the higher planes of the inner consciousness are to be found that wonderful aspect or phase of mind, which we call intuition, which Webster defines as direct apprehension or cognition, immediate knowledge as in perception or consciousness involving no reasoning process. It is a higher form of that which we know as intellect, the difference being chiefly that instinct belongs to the phenomena of the below conscious planes, while intuition belongs to the above conscious planes and has to do with the higher part of the nature of the individual. Instinct sends its messages up to the intellect while intuition sends its messages down to the intellect. Many of the highest forms of pleasurable things come from the region of intuition. Art, music, poetry, all these come from above, from the region of intuition. So inability to distinguish between the two can be a result of identifying as the mind. By that I mean with beliefs versus acknowledging they have a mind. They may also believe thus the intellect is the highest self, 
identical with the Spirit. Then there are those who, through abiding in the silence and in moments of solitude, have transcended to realize the self, the I. I like how William Walker Atkinson also said it. The I consciousness has been realized beyond the intellectual plane and is able to look back to that plane and the one still further back, the physical plane. I acknowledges the value of both mind and body, but regards them both as instruments. I feels that it has existed from the beginning, if beginning there was, and will exist until the end, if end there be. I feels a keen pleasure in mere existence, in the now. I knows itself to be part of the whole thing. I knows itself to be a tiny drop of spirit from the great spirit ocean a ray from the Supreme Sun, a particle of the Divine Being, using that body and mind with which to manifest itself. It merely knows that it is, and has always been, and always will be. I allows intellect to indulge in speculations, but contents itself with the knowledge that it is. It frets not itself with the problems of the past or future, and knows itself to be a part of the whole. It says trustfully and confidently to the Absolute, Thy will be done. Knowing that the law is working for development, always for ultimate good, I is not disturbed by the cares, troubles, and sorrows of life. It knows them for what they are. I knows itself to be one with the I of all living creatures, and knowing this cannot manifest hate, fear, envy, jealousy. It cannot despise or condemn. These and other feelings of the old life drop from the person like a discarded mantle when I mounts its throne. I has but one feeling toward the whole living world, love. Know yourself. Know that you have within you the divine spark, to which both body and mind are but instruments. Know that your body is the temple of the living spirit and respect it as such. Know that your intellect is but the instrument of the manifestation of the spirit, the I. So now in the silence, where the I is acknowledged, and for those that have been abiding as the I, they further realize, as we discussed in Sunday's video, which I'll link to in the description, there is one true underlying reality that is perpetually now being experienced as subject and object relationships and you are one with it all. Non-local consciousness, which is all and infinitely intelligent. And from this awareness is where, as mentioned, intuition emerges from. The infinite intelligence that created all emerges within you in periods of silence and solitude. As Florence Scovel Shin once said, prayer is telephoning to God and intuition is God telephoning to you. That stated, it may be also accessed outside of moments of silence and solitude, and thus it is not dependent on moments of silence or solitude. Yet I encourage silence and solitude if you ever feel you can benefit from connecting back to the divine center, as James Allen once said, in the heavenly life. The secret of life, of abundant life, with its strength, its felicity, and its unbroken peace, is to find the divine center within oneself and to live in and from that, instead of in that outer circumference of disturbances, the clamors, cravings, and argumentations which make up the animal and intellectual man. So from my experience, the power of silence and solitude and benefits mentioned, like for example, thinking for yourself from intuition, was discovered by the following three practices. Firstly, meditation. So the meditation I've been doing since 2008 daily is Vipassana. I'll link in the description to a video which provides a step-by-step -step guide. This helped me release identification to the emotions and the beliefs that are behind them, which result in emotions being related to in a not-so-ideal way. And by that I mean, for example, prior to public speaking, I had strong emotions of anxiety and fear as I was identified with the beliefs that were behind them of fear or rejection. And through daily meditation, I found it was easier to allow the emotions to be and experience the presentations ideally from my vision. The silence occurring automatically in the moment when I was about to be identified with the belief, even for a split second, 
And it was from there where I allowed myself to perform intuitively and ideally as identification to those beliefs were released. Vipassana, which means to see things as they are, is one of India's most ancient techniques of meditation. Studies have shown that practicing Vipassana meditation can offer a range of mind and body benefits, including reduced symptoms of depression and anxiety, better stress management, and improved self-confidence, such was the case with my experience. Then came self-inquiry. Self-inquiry is what I learned from Ramana Maharshi and also Advaita Vedanta, which I noticed I became more interested in while I was studying Neville's information, mainly when he spoke of consciousness the way he described it, like, for example, in The Power of Awareness, where he said, The light is consciousness. Consciousness is one, manifesting in legions of forms or levels of consciousness. There is no one that is not all that is. For consciousness, though expressed in an infinite series of levels, is not divisional. There is no real separation or gap in consciousness. I am cannot be divided. So I started to get more into understanding consciousness, which I once thought was localized. And then upon experiencing it non-localized in like, for example, remote viewing experiences during meditation, which by the way, I made a video discussing recently. I'll link in the description to it. So Ramana Maharshi's self-inquiry starts with a few questions and then leads to stillness, acknowledgement of the self and from abiding as self for a period. The true nature of self being love, happiness, and fulfillment is experienced and thus experientially understood. So the question was asked to him, who am I? His response was, the gross body, which is composed of the seven humors, I am not. The five cognitive senses, the senses of hearing, touch, sight, taste, and smell, which apprehend their respective objects, sound, touch, color, taste, and odor, I am not. The five cognitive sense organs, the organs of speech, locomotion, grasping, exertion, and procreation, which have their respective functions, speaking, moving, grasping, exerting, and enjoying, I am not. The five vital airs, prana, from which perform respectively the five functions of in-breathing, etc., I am not. Even the mind which thinks I am not. The knee science, too, which is endowed only with the residual impressions of objects, and in which there are no objects and no functionings, I am not. If I am none of these, then who am I? After negating all the above mentioned, as not this, not this, that awareness which alone remains, that I am. So Ramana Maharshi taught that by being aware of what he refers to as the I thought, without being identified with it, cause the I thought to disappear during the practice, from which all that remains is pure awareness, which is the realization of self. I practice this often now and then, which is the direct path to I, direct stillness, and what happened was life experiences where I once found to be very challenging or even impossible to maintain a calm, fluid mind, I was able to respond to circumstances ideally accordingly. And you and I are no different, as in the true nature of the I is the same. So you could do this as well with practice of what we're discussing here. Number three is flow. And a deep stage of flow, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi refers to as autotelic, where actions and awareness become one. For more on flow, I recommend my flow series, which I'll link to in the description. So an autotelic is one who is living as a conduit of divine expression, living in and from the divine center wherever they are. I often get asked the question, how do you remain in the flow, remain autotelic? Well, I radically arrange my entire life end to end, no stone left unturned to make flow a priority. For the creative, by making flow a priority, it is your greatest service to the world. By being in flow, which is your natural way of being, and mediating the divine into your art, innovation, invention, it is not only a benefit for your well-being, it's also a benefit for others in the world. And you don't need to be as unflinching about it like I am. Do it to whatever degree you'd like to reap the benefits from it. So in summary, valuing silence and solitude helps with imagining whatever you desire into existence. You'll notice also as an autotelic, it happens automatically 
as there's no real gap between the desires of the heart and the mind that conceives it. Desire means you already have. This is something that is realized experientially through these three areas. So now armed with this, one can, as William Walker Atkinson said, can say, I am part of the eternal life principle. I am created in the divine image. I am filled with the divine breath of life. Nothing can hurt me, for I am eternal. The first requisite for the acquirement of an understanding of the law is the recognition of the existence and the power of the real self, the I. The more complete the recognition, the greater the power. So again, three simple things, nothing complicated about it. Meditation, self-inquiry, and flow. To realize self and the true nature of self by allowing it to be imagined into evidence through the five senses as far as they perceive, mediating God ideally to all life experiences as a healthy, harmonious relationship between the observer and the observation. A perfect harmony between physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, From the stillness of who I am emerges from the heart of reality, intuition of how I truly desire to experience life from imagination, evidenced through the five senses by the power of my subconscious mind, as far as they perceive. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.